Hey, I'm Christy Simpson. Today's question is, how do you address and lovingly manage emotions of kids who don't get the part they auditioned for? I think the best thing you can do, really, um, is kind of in the long game, talk about it a lot. Because I think sometimes we get frustrated with kids because they don't behave a way that we are expecting when we haven't really made those expectations clear. Okay, so like, oh, I cannot believe they're being so selfish right now. How do they not know that? You know, and, and, and depending on where these kids are coming from, they may not know how to behave at all. Or they may come from, a, on, on the other scale, they, they may come from a family where they uh, are very entitled and expect that they will get the best of everything. And maybe their parents are telling them that. Yeah, and you deserve to get the best part. You will always deserve. And so I, you never know what you're going to be coming up against. So I think that it's really important in, on an almost weekly basis to talk about how um, we are all important. You are special just by being you, right? I think we need to tell kids that. A lot, but that doesn't mean you're special and you are gonna have the lead part and everyone else isn't special. Everyone's special. And sometimes that means that we uh, that my friend is gonna get that big part and I'm gonna be really happy for her. This is something that is learned and it's a culture that you can create, but it's not, it, it's not fast and it doesn't happen just from one speech, right? So I think we just need to talk about it more and talk about it more like, you guys are all awesome and we are important together in the body of Christ. Talk about the body of Christ that God makes some people hands and some people feet. What would happen if we were all feet? Well, there would be no hands. How would we pick something up? We all have a special part to play. And some of you kids actually can be different things. You can be feet and you can be hands. And isn't it awesome that we can all come together to be a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle to make this program great? I don't think they'll buy it if you just say it once. I think we need to talk about it a lot. Um, and then enlist the parents too. You can send home a letter to the parents and say, hey, help me out by telling your kid that that three line part that she got is awesome and she's going to make it so great. Because it doesn't help when the parent is like, what? You got those three lines. You're so much better than everybody else. And that's going to happen. But we can try on that end too to create a culture that understands that it, your value is not in what part you got. Like I, I have a, you know, a kid that's like, well, I have this many lines and this many lines. And actually I remember people doing that in high school too, counting their lines, which is where uh, my director always said, there are no small parts, only small actors, meaning nothing is small. You can make it big. And if you think it's small, it's because you are a small person and you're making it small, right? So you're going to bloom where you're planted and this is a great lesson in life. We're not always going to get the part we think we deserve, the job we think we deserve. And sometimes it's not even going to be fair. And that's okay because you can do the best you can in whatever situation you're in. So I say talk about it a lot. Talk about it a lot. Um, and, and get in kids' faces and say, you were amazing. You were doing such a great job. I can't wait to see you do that one part. And, and work on spreading out the parts so it doesn't look like you're playing favorites. But if it looks like you're playing favorites, talk about it too. Say, listen, didn't you notice how great this person did? This person was awesome and I'm so excited that they get to do it this time and another time it's going to be somebody else. Talk about it a lot. That is my solution for you.